What started out as a passion for athletics combined with knowledge passed down from his father, Addy Dassler, alongside his brother Rudolph, would push to start making specialized shoes tailored to the specific sport athletes were playing in. The company had a tumultuous start, plagued with economic issues mostly stemming from the end of World War I. But after an incredibly successful celebrity endorsement from Jesse Owens in 1936, it seemed like the company was set for rapid expansion. But when World War II created a rift between the two brothers, a rivalry was incited that would spread beyond their family to the entire town, causing a lasting feud within the community that spanned decades, while giving us two of the most popular athletic shoe brands. This is the story behind Adidas and Puma, and this is Learn Something New. The story of Adidas begins with Adolf Dassler, who was born November 3rd, 1900 in a small German town of only about 4,000 people. The town was known for its numerous shoemakers, with many of the people either working with or working for the cobblers. Even the Dasslers were involved in the shoemaking enterprise, with Adolf's father, Christoph Dassler, working in a local shoe factory while his mother, Pauline, operated a laundry service. When he was young, Adolf and his older brother Rudolf worked for their mother, helping transport the laundry to and from her customers, but quickly they began to learn more about their father's work, crafting shoes from raw materials. Just before turning 13 years old, Adolf, known by his friends as Addy, completed his high school education and contemplated joining his father in making shoes. But for whatever reason, and despite living in a community with a high concentration of shoemakers, Christoph asked his son to begin an apprenticeship with a local baker instead. He agreed with his father's wishes, but he quickly found that the work didn't interest him, not in the way that his father's work did. In his free time, Addy spent hours taking part in every sport that he could feasibly play in such a small town, excelling in track and field, soccer, boxing, ice hockey, javelin, and skiing, and he would carry this interest in sports with him for the rest of his life. Not only was he a gifted and passionate athlete, but he was also interested in the equipment used for each sport, eventually figuring out something that seems like common sense to us today. He noticed that athletes across sports often wore whatever shoes they normally wore throughout their day. If they did have shoes specifically for playing in sports, it was just one kind of shoe that was used across all the sports they played. Addy figured that if an athlete were to have a shoe that had been optimized for use in the specific sport they were playing in, they would see a notable improvement in their performance. He felt it could revolutionize a sports industry that was just beginning to see some traction. For context, many sports weren't played on a large scale like they are today, but the very first of the modern Olympic Games had just begun in April of 1896, giving people some of the first insight into what a coordinated, wide-scale sporting event might look like. But unfortunately for Addy, trouble was on the horizon. World War I broke out in 1914, and it would turn into a devastating defeat for the German nation, with rippling effects that would weigh on the country for decades. As for Addy, he was too young to take on anything more than a local role throughout most of the conflict, but as soon as he turned 18, he was drafted into the final months of the Great War, serving in the German military until October of 1919. Throughout his time in the military, he never lost sight of his concept of specialized athletic shoes, and as soon as he got back to his hometown, he converted part of his family's house into a makeshift shoe workshop, partnering with a local shoemaker to help him where he lacked experience. This was not a great time to start a business, however. Of all the countries in the central powers of World War I, Germany was hit with some of the worst punishments, as set in the Treaty of Versailles. They lost around 13% of their land, they were ordered to pay reparations for the damage they caused to the Allies, and because of this, saw spiraling hyperinflation in their currency. As far as economic conditions go for starting an athletic wear company, you couldn't ask for much worse. The business had to be put on pause for the time being, with Addy instead making money from repairing the shoes of his local community, especially as they were seeking to keep the shoes they had longer rather than spending scarce resources on a new pair. On the side, however, he was still tinkering, taking various materials originally made for military use in World War I and shaping them into prototypes. As he got into a more stable financial situation, he dedicated himself more to this side hustle, seeking to start manufacturing these shoes on a larger scale. But once again, he ran into problems. You see, partly as a result of their severe economic issues stemming from having lost the war, Germans often lacked enough electrical power to run their factories. 
But Addy decided he wasn't going to let that stop him, choosing instead to innovate his way to a solution. He took a leather milling machine and using a system of belts, mounted a bike to it. With this, he brought on the company's first employee, Joseph Earhart, whose sole job it was to ride the bike and provide power to the milling machine. After sending samples of the shoe to sports clubs around the area, he received numerous orders. But even as he began filling them, he continued refining his design. At this point, Addy's brother, Rudolph, had been training to become a police officer. But shortly after he had finished his training, Addy asked if he would be willing to come in with him on the business, something that he would regret for the majority of the rest of his life. Together, they named their company the Dassler Brothers Sport Shoe Factory. And at first, their dynamic worked really well. Addy, more reserved and passionate about the quality of his shoes, worked to improve their design, while Rudolph took on a more charismatic role, selling the shoes to customers. Even though their first two years were difficult financially, especially given the external economic conditions, they eventually found their footing, with over 10 workers producing 50 shoes per day, mainly soccer and track shoes. By the time 1926 rolled around, demand had increased so much so that they decided they could no longer work out of their family's home, getting an actual factory space and growing to a staff of around 25 who were producing 100 shoes daily. The company would see massive expansion in their business as they began a campaign of getting those shoes onto the feet of professional athletes, with the idea being that athletes who performed well while wearing their shoes would give credibility to their product something today we refer to as a celebrity endorsement. This concept proved to be true after a famous American runner in the 1936 Olympics named Jesse Owens won four gold medals while wearing the Dassler shoes, leading to widespread talk of the brand. However, as Adolf Hitler rose to power in 1933, both brothers joined the Nazi party with Rudolf seemingly being an especially passionate member, while Addy supposedly joined because it seemed like it was the direction the country was heading in. While Rudolf went off to fight the Allied nations in World War II, the Nazis ordered Addy at the Dassler factory to produce 10,500 pairs of shoes a month for the military. This strained the brothers' relationship because Addy only wanted to make shoes for athletes, but also because Rudolf tried to have his wife stand in for him in his absence, which Addy declined. In 1943, the factory was completely shut down, forced to stop making shoes altogether, and instead, start producing Panzerschreck rocket launchers for Germany. After the war ended, Addy would testify that his brother Rudy was part of the Nazi secret police, leaving himself to be the sole person running the company. But because of his own position in the Nazi party, Rudy testified that Addy was the one who turned the factory into a weapon maker. The denazification panel didn't see any evidence to support this, and so they allowed Addy to go back to running his company. However, all the infighting meant that the company would ultimately split after Rudolf got out of prison, with factories moving to opposite sides of the Arak River that flowed through their town. Addy Dassler renamed his new company Adidas, combining his first and last name, and Rudolf did the same, naming his Ruda, which he later changed to Puma. Since most people soon became employed by one of the two companies, a rivalry between citizens spread throughout the entire community. Employees of one didn't talk to employees of the other. Marrying across companies was strictly forbidden, and residents even limited their shopping to the side of the river that their company worked on. Adidas was able to overtake Puma in sales, mainly because of Addy's expertise in shoe innovation, but Puma still did extremely well. Despite the success of both companies, however, the two brothers never overcame their hatred of one another. They both passed away in the 1970s and ended up being buried at opposite ends of the town cemetery. Thanks for watching Learn Something New. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Or if you want, you can check out the channel's Patreon, linked below in the description. A very special thanks to the channel's patrons, including our newest patron, Robert Lowe. But as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.